Hey guys, Tanya from Delilah Design and I am literally on my front porch today and um, I wanted to show you guys what I'm working on. I'm making some plastic urns from Lowe's. Um, they are really cheap, only $11 and um, I'm making them, trying to make them look like concrete, ceramic, give them some character, um, and I'm using couture crust and embossing medium to do that. So let me turn the camera and I will show you guys what I'm working on. Okay, so I'm using two products. One is called couture crust and it is a texture medium. It's made by the couture collection um, it is it's there's two different products this one's couture crust and then this one is embossing medium sorry I've obviously used this one a lot it looks kind of bad but anyway <laughs> um, real life right so this one is more smooth than the crust crust has more texture embossing medium is more smooth um, let me see eh, there's not a lot in there but it's it's less um, it's more of a like a smooth texture but when you put it on either furniture craft projects things like this DIY um, it will add some texture so let's put that on there but anyway so I like to mix the two actually and that's what I've done in this container and um, I'm gonna use this to um, put it on this urn but you see how it's there's not a lot of characters plastic um, and this will add add some interest to it make it look a little more expensive than what it really is so anyway let's get started so um, just one note I already planted my plant in this my fern <laughs> And then I decided to do this. So I just put a, um, a plastic bag around around my fern. <laughs> so it works. Anyway, I'm going to use two different tools. I'm going to use a chip brush and then a sea sponge. Um, and I've already started on the, on the front a little bit or on this side. But I'll just show you what I'm doing in this step. There's really only two steps. You apply this, the crust and embossing medium mixture, and then um, you let that dry. It takes about two hours, and then you apply your paint over it. Um, the other step is you need to put some kind of protective top coat on it if it's going to be outside, especially. But you will be watering your plants in here, so you might want to protect it from. You know water but um it's really pretty easy so i'm just dipping this is my mixture on here on this top i'm just mixing my putting my sea sponge in there and then i'm just gonna randomly dab it on I like the sea sponge because it it will cover a large area and it does put it on very randomly but the brush is really good for this little small spaces or spots down at the bottom um, so I kind of get like a base layer on and then I'm gonna build it up in certain areas because I want some areas to be thicker here, let me get some more crust onto my top here. Okay. So, yeah, that'll be good. So, like this. Want some to be kind of randomly thicker. I'll do that a little up here, too. And I am going to paint this 
with a black paint over it like a I'm using milk paint and um, I will allow some of the white to show through just for some variation um, so you don't necessarily I could like just kind of do random spots and not cover the whole thing but I really want to add texture to the the whole surface um, just that's just a preference I have two of these one on either side of my my door um, and that's the way I did the other one and I really like the way it turned out so I'm gonna do this one the same so that's really all there is to that stuff it's super easy just continue down on the the lower part um, then I down here I just use the brush to kind of randomly like stipple it in spots you just want to move your brush kind of back and forth random that's the key word here to this technique random <laughs> you can remember that you're gonna do pretty good so nice to be outside and crafting it's perfect weather or this is more DIY I guess but anyway that's it I'm just gonna continue this whole process around the whole urn I'm gonna let it dry and then I'll be back to show you guys how I apply the paint it looks a little scary but I think I can make it work Stay tuned. Okay, I'm back to do the second step. This crust has totally dried. Um, and I'm ready to apply my paint. I'm using um, a milk paint. And I just feel like the milk paint will be better suited for an outdoor environment. Um, even though these won't be getting wet really they're under a covered porch but um, milk paint has UV protective qualities um, and once I put a clear coat on this I'm just gonna use this um Krylon max clear coat it's just kind of what I had around um, once this all dries I'm gonna put that over it and it should be good and protective for you know a covered outdoor area so um, just getting some paint on the brush and then removing removing it a little bit and I'm just gonna kind of stipple it around kind of the same method I used to apply the the crust Like I said, I still want some of the white to show through. And I'll go light in some areas and heavy in other areas. I kind of just cover it lightly to begin with and then I'll go back in and, and fill in more if I feel like I need to to get the, the finish I want. You can also put more on by just putting your brush more flat. I'll put a lot in certain areas too. There's no real specific technique. It's just kind of play with it until you get the look you like. Um, I could cover the whole thing in black and it'd still have a nice texture to it. But 
I, I kind of like the way it looks with the white showing. My original plan was to cover it all and just have the texture with the black, but I thought it looked a little more um, authentic to leave some of the white showing. So it's up to you, personal preference. That's the good thing about this. You can make it exactly how you want it. Okay, let me turn this a little bit. Kind of like that. Like I said, I might go back and um, do more. But for now, that's good. So let me just continue on this part. The birds are loud, huh? <laughs> I love it though. It's fun to work outside when you can be in a shaded area. <laughs> This area right here has a good bit of texture because I added more of the embossing medium crust mixture. Added more right there. So I kind of, I don't want to cover that up too much. But that's pretty much it. You just kind of stipple it on. Um, once your brush is, doesn't have a lot of paint on it, you can press more. Get some of the paint off that way and it kind of gives it a different, different effect. More random, random brush strokes, I guess. like. That's looking cool. And of course I'll get the lower part, but you guys can't see that, so I'll I'll do that afterwards. And when my, my brush has a lot of paint on it right now, because I just dipped it in, so that's when I want to do real light, kind of pouncing motions. Then once you get some of the, the paint off, you can start doing a little more pressure and a more of a brushing technique there. And I got a lot of good texture in this one. I, I like it when the texture's real built up, like there's a couple like really good spots there with good texture. And if you if you did this part and you felt like you wanted more texture, you could always add more on top of this. And then just, you could either just leave it white or off white really. That's what the crust and the um, embossing medium dries to like an off white. Um, so you could add more of that on and just let it dry and either leave it or go back over it with the, the paint. Um, and then also, you know, you could layer in other other colors if you wanted to. Um, I think a brown, a little bit of a brown, like rusty brown color would look good um, in the crevices. It would add a little bit of an aged te um, look to it. And actually, I think I'm going to do that a little bit with some brown glaze. And if I do that, I'll show you guys too. Uh oh 
get my plants. If you guys do this, do it before you put a plant in it. Just It'll make your life easier. <laughs> but if you're like me and you forget, or you decide to do it after you've already put your plant in, just cover it up with a plastic bag. I think you saw that in the first video. See? <laughs> Okay, so that's about it. I will um, continue on and do the whole this whole technique on the rest of the pot. And I will show you finished photos. Um, and if I do that glazing, I'll I'll add that in here too. So I did decide that I would like to add a little um, brown element to it just to add a little like rust aged effect um, so I'm using ooh, there's a glare glaze couture Van Dyke brown um, and it is a rich dark brown um, it's a really nice glaze color so I'm just using this foam brush um, yeah I got a little too much on there I'm gonna remove some on the lip of, of the container here okay and same kind of technique I'll just I'll dab it kind of in the crevices um, where it might make sense you know, for dust to kind of gather. Um, yeah, I might kind of blend it out with my finger. Um, Glaze Couture is low VOC and it's water-based, so it just washes out and it's not toxic or anything, so. I feel fine touching it. <laughs> Um, but I, I like the way that looks and I think it just adds another element to it. Makes it look a little more authentic. Um, you can go down into the, the other part of the pot too. I might get some spots in there a little bit. But mainly I'm going to focus on this lip up here and then the lower part, um, the base of the, the plant. And I'll just kind of do the same technique um, all around it. But yeah, I like that. I think it adds a little extra to it, a little element that I like. Okay, that's all, and once this dries, I'll be ready to put the clear coat on it, and these will be finished. I hope you guys enjoyed watching my video. Please subscribe to my channel, and if you're interested in any of these products that I used, you can find them at paintcoutureshop.com. I will list the link in the comments. Um, I use mainly embossing medium couture crust and van dyke glaze couture thanks again for watching guys